For segment relationships in circles, our main goal is to answer the following question. What relationships exist among the segments formed by two intersecting chords or among segments of two sequence that intersect outside the circle? So first, let's review some important terms. Um, let's recall what a chord is. At the same time, um, I think there's value in reviewing what a secant line is. Okay, so chord. Chord is a segment that's inside the circle and it has its two endpoints along the circumference. So one endpoint lies on one part of the circle and then it passes through the interior and then it um, has another endpoint um, on the circumference of the circle. For example, this one endpoint and it goes inside the circle and then another endpoint still on the circumference. Okay. Um, secant. A secant line or a secant segment um, is a segment that intersects a circle at two points. What's the difference between a chord and a secant? Well, a chord does not go outside the circle, while a secant line um, may extend beyond the circumference. Like this blue line here has an external portion. So are all chords considered as secant lines or segments? Well, yes, but not the other way around. So not all secants are chords, but a chord um, may be considered as a secant segment. The first theorem we're going to look at is called the segment of chords theorem. If two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, in this case AB and CD, um, are both chords and they intersect in the interior at point E. Then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. So what does it basically mean? If you look at the figure, um, chord AB is divided into two parts. So you can think of this as your part one, while you can think of this as your part two. Similarly, DE is part one of chord DC, and that portion is part two of the same chord. So pretty much, you multiply the lengths of the two um, red labeled parts, that must be equal to um, the product of the two green labeled ones. So that's the meaning of segment of chord theorem. Let's try to use the segment of chords theorem to solve an example. So in this case, um, chord ML is divided into two parts with measures given as x plus 2 and x plus 1, while segment KJ is split into two with one part labeled x and the other one is x plus 4. So if we follow the theorem we just read, we multiply the two parts together in one chord and that must be equal to the product of you know, the smaller portions of the other chord. So let me write it down. For the first one, if I start with x plus 2, I'm going to multiply that by its partner, which is x plus 1. And this must be equal to the product of x times x plus 4. Just like part 1 times part 2 is equal to part 1 times part 2. So now how do I multiply this? By using your FOIL method, this will become um, x squared. So that's x times x is x squared. So this will become plus 1x, this is plus 2x, so all together they become 3x because they're like terms, plus multiply the constant 2 times 1, that's 2. Okay, is equal to x times x, so that's x squared plus 4x. So if we combine like terms, remember if you have a quadratic equation, um, usually we put all the constants, I mean not the constants, but put all the terms on one side. So if you have x squared here and then you move the other x squared from the other side, this will be subtracted from that so they cancel out. Okay, 
and then this will become 3x minus 4x, so that will become negative x, and then bring down 2, so negative x plus 2. Honey, can you turn off the sound of the phone, please? Thank you. Okay, so now if you move um, x to the other side, so it will become positive, and this will be 2 is equal to x. There we go. So if we know that x is equal to 2, let's plug it in. So ml now, so ml will now become, if x is equal to 2, so that's 4 plus um, 3, so that will be 7. While kj is equal to, oh, what did I write, kl? So kj is equal to, so this is 2, and then this will be 6. So together, that will become 8. There you go. So those are the um, lengths of the two chords. And take note, they don't have to end up equal to each other because, well, they're not diameters. They are not equidistant from the center um, either. So they don't have to be congruent to each other. Okay, this slide shows you more definitions. Pretty much it's, um, it's a difference between a tangent segment, which is the blue one, and the secant segment. Okay, so what's the difference? It just depends on, you know, the number of intersections formed with a circle. For example, this blue one here is called a tangent because it intersects your circle at only one point, while PR crosses or intersects your circle at two points namely Q and R. Now, a secant segment has two parts. Well, the first one is the external segment. External means outside, so it's the extension outside. Well, this black portion here, so that's actually the chord. So a secant segment is a combination of an external segment and a chord. You might want to memorize that because you need that in your practice later on. Um, we're going to look at some examples and some more theorems after this. The first one being or the second theorem, rather, is segments of secant theorem. So if two secant segments share the same endpoint outside the circle, then the product of the length of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the length of the other secant segment and its external segment. Okay, that sounded like a tongue twister, but let's look at the figure. If you multiply EA times AB, it's equal to... Um, the product of EC times ED. Well, let's analyze what these parts are with respect to the figure. So we know that EA, EA is actually the one outside. So it's the external part of the secant. Well, EB, so this EB here is the whole secant segment, right? Um, well, out times whole, out whole, sounds bad. But here it's EC, which is again outside, Right, and then ED is again the whole secant segment. So pretty much you're multiplying out times whole is equal to out times whole. Well, if that um, doesn't make sense, you can also think of it as easy at, um, EC here, this one, as the external segment. There you go. External times ED. Okay, so. Where am I? So EC is external, that one, and then um, ED is the whole secant segment. So secant is equal to, same thing, same pattern, external times secant. There you go. So you have two possible ways here of memorizing it, whichever makes more sense to you. You know, use that so you can easily memorize the formula. Here's how to use it um, in an example. So let's write down the formula again. Out times whole is equal to out times whole. So it doesn't matter which secant you begin with. The external segment here is 9. And then the whole secant is not 11. That's the chord part only. So you add them up. 9 plus 11 is 20. So equals. The external portion or outside is 10, and then the whole segment is not 10x. Many of you, you know, if we were in class, we'll probably say 10x, but that's going to be 10 plus x, so you add them up. So this will be 180 is equal to 
Now you multiply this together or distribute, you get 100 plus 10x. Oops, fix that plus sign right there. Okay, so combining like terms, you get um, 180 take away 100 will be 80 and then is equal to 10x. So that means x is equal to 8. There we go. Okay, so this last theorem is similar to 10.19, except that one is a tangent and the other is a secant. However, since I know that you memorized that formula very well, I'm going to use that to explain this last example. Okay, so out times whole is equal to out times whole. So if this is a tangent, it means that um, the outer portion, okay, is just the same as the whole secant, I mean, whole tangent segment. That's why you see here EA to the second power. Well, here in the other um, secant segment, the external portion is EC, and then the whole um, secant segment is described by ED. There you go. So how do we use that in an example? So again, you may write down the same formula. Okay. So for the RQ portion, outside segment is 16, which is the same as, you know, the entire tangent segment. And then the external portion here is X, while the whole portion is 8 plus X. So you can also write X plus 8, because addition is commutative. Okay, so this will become 256 is equal to 8X plus X squared. And just like what I mentioned earlier, um, try to, you know, move all your terms to one side. Since x squared is positive here, I'm going to keep it here on the right side. So this is x squared with a little bit of rearrangement. Um, x squared plus 8x minus 256. So now this is a quadratic formula. Is it factorable? We don't know. If you've forgotten how to factor, um, you can also use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the radical of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a is the coefficient next to x squared, which is 1. Your b is 8, and then your constant c is the, um, okay, this value here, negative 256. So negative b means the, the opposite of 8. So this will become negative 8 plus or minus radical of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times the c, which is negative 256, all over 2 times 1, so that will become 2. So now let's make some calculations. So we will get negative 8 plus or minus the root of, this will become 64 minus, no, that will change into plus. Oops. Let me erase that. It looks like a 7. Okay, so that will turn to plus um, 1024 all over 2. So altogether, this becomes negative 8 plus or minus radical 1088 all over 2. So how do we write down our final answer? Now, if you try dividing 1088 by perfect squares, like divided by 4, divided by 4 again, um, and so on, until you can rewrite it into a product of a perfect square number and a non-perfect square number, this is actually the same as 64 times 17. So correct me if I'm wrong. So that means this can be written as negative 8 plus or minus um, the square root of 64 is 8. So 8 root 17 all over 2. Now if you divide these by 2, this can be written as negative 4 plus or minus 4 radical 17. So if you solve these two separately, um, negative 4 minus 4 times, you know, radical 17, that will result to a negative number. So that means we're only going to consider negative 4 um, plus 
for radical 17. So the final value of this one by using a calculator is about 12.5 rounded off to the nearest tenth.